Hey guys, it's Mike Chen. I am here in Queens, New York. Today has been really rainy, a bit chilly, and when the weather's like this, there's really only one thing I want to eat. Let's go get some hot pot. <music> Okay, Mike, focus. Don't get sidetracked. Let's go to Hot Pie. Although that looks really good. The first place I'm visiting in this video, and I am so excited because I spent a lot of time in Thailand. I just never went to a Thai Hot Pot until now in Queens, back in New York. Thai, all you can eat Hot Pot Buffet named Jiao Han. And Jiao Han is a particular type of Thai broth. And taking a look at the menu, there's not that many choices you can choose from. There's slided beef, slided pork, which I'm assuming is the equivalent of Chinese fatty beef, and thin sliced pork. There's also a lot of seafood here. But all in all, only about 14 meat items. But beyond that, you have access to this. There's some noodles, eggs, fish tofu, different sorts of fish balls. You don't usually see dill in Chinese Hot Pot. And this, I actually love this. This is a type of fungi that's typically found in Chinese herbal soups. It is fantastic. You know, this is another reason why I love hot pot so much because different cultures have their own adaptations and I can't wait to try this one. And whatever blood you think goes best, I'll trust you on my blood selection. Okay. Okay, so let's get some beef pork, marinated beef, tripe, we'll do little clams, some squid. I eat a lot. Sure. I think I'll be okay. Yeah, well definitely these, I mean, I'm gonna eat the crap out of these two. And instead of the traditional sauce bar you find at a Chinese hot pot, you only get three types of dipping sauce. The first one is called the sugiyagi sauce, and it has inside sesame, hot sauce, oyster sauce. It's the less spicy of the dipping sauce. This is jiao. This is the really spicy one of the three. And Thai people typically dip their grilled meats in here. It has Thai chili, some tamarind sauce, some cilantro I see. And the third one, this is just seafood sauce. Looks like there's some garlic in here, some chilies, and this is where you dip all the seafood in. Thank you. I mean, the pot itself just looks like what the Chinese use, but it smells way different. This is the tom zap, and it's pretty clear soup. Let me just taste a little bit. Already, I'm smelling a little tom yum. <coughs> I caught me by surprise. Really spicy. It doesn't look it, right? It's not red at all. That's delicious. Full of flavor. Wow, that broth is good. Give it a black belt in judo or something. Oh my goodness. This is the Jiao Han, and, and it has blood in here. You can see how dark it is, and it's not as thick as I thought it was gonna be. Wow, it, it's slightly spicy, not as much as the other one. It's not like you can really taste the, the blood. Just a ton of flavor in here. I mean, it's probably some of the best hot pot broth I've had on this video series. Extremely flavorful. You could drink this on its own as a soup and you'd be happy with that. It's just from the meat quality, it is sliced thin, but a bit thicker than most Chinese hot pot places. So let's take this beef for a test drive. I'm gonna cook this in a tom ya broth. Hello, delicious. Oh, that broth flavor definitely seeps in there. You know, what might be even really good is if I cook the meat and eat it with a little bit of soup. Oh, that works. I love that broth. That's a love that would last. Try a piece of the pork. For some reason, this side is not boiling as much as the other side. I hate it when that happens. That's called a hot pot imbalance, and you need to fix that. It's a superb hot pot broth. I'm just wondering, if it already tastes so good just from the broth, I can imagine what these sauce is gonna be like. Let's just try the first one here. The less spicy one. Oh, oh, have mercy on my tongue. That is fantastic. And if that's the one that's not that spicy, some people might have trouble with the middle one. I mean, this looks sinister. That's so good, we gotta do it again. Oh, well, that's so delicious. It's citrusy, it is very spicy. The sauce is fragrant, it's aromatic. I love that the citrus balances out the fat of the meat so well. Um, I'm actually kind of scared out of this middle one because this one wasn't supposed to be spicy, and it really is. So when they say this is spicy, I think it's gonna be really spicy. All right, I'm mentally prepared. My spice shield is up. Yeah, that's spicy. This tastes like most of the Thai chili sauce I had in Thailand. So it's up to that spice level. To me, this is a really good amount of spice, but for me right now, still that first one. I'm still reeling at how good that was. Finally, to try the seafood sauce, let's put in some squid. And this is something else that you don't wanna cook that much. Just a little bit and it's done. The thing is, and I love this by the way, all three of these sauces are spicy, okay? They're really spicy. The seafood sauce, a ton of Thai chili in here as well. Also a nice citrusy flavor. So I think the common theme of Thai hot pot dipping sauce is to take your tongue to a back alley and just pummel it. But I mean that in the best way possible because I love it. I mean, this is all my type of dipping sauce. I heard this was awesome. Garlic fried rice. I'm usually a huge proponent of never eating rice when you're having all you can eat hot pot. But I heard this is awesome, I gotta try it. Wow, it smells so garlicky. I'm pretty sure I love this. 
There's just so much garlic in here. And I say that with all the passion and love in the world because this is fantastic. Mm. This is how fried rice should all strive to be. You know what? I, I can make this better. I can. Dip some beef in my favorite hot sauce. Dack that on the rice. Do you have a spoon? Thank you. Thank you so much. You should put some vegetables. Some vegetables in there? You want? I should eat some vegetables? He's right. You gotta eat some vegetables. But first, let's take a bite of this. Some beef, some sauce, some garlic with some rice in there. You know this is gonna be a great spoonful, right? If somebody told me that I could eat this rice, but I may never be able to kiss somebody again because my breath will eternally smell like garlic, you know what I would say? I would say this. Mm. Okay, when the staff working at a restaurant tells you you should be eating more vegetables, you probably need to eat more vegetables. Never had dill before in a hot pot. Mushrooms count as vegetables, right? As long as I can dip my vegetables into spicy sauce, I'll eat anything, except broccoli. Mmm, dill is so interesting. Wow, that just releases so much flavor. I think that would go great with meat. Little dill, little pork, a little love, a little happiness. That's like Nobel food prize brilliant. It's so awesome because although some of the ingredients are similar to Chinese hot pot, or the same as Chinese hot pot, the flavors are completely different and very distinctively Thai. I'm excited about these noodles because this is gonna soak up a lot of the broth and it's gonna be amazing. It's always sad that my favorite sauce is running low, but I'm really happy for reinforcements. Oh yeah, there we go. Some ramen noodles, some rice noodles as well. Dip some meat, put it on top of the noodles, a little bit of veggie, and some tofu. And I know this is gonna burn. <laughs> Just as I suspected. All the delicious soup flavor is soaked up in these noodles. Welcome to the intersection of spicy bill and delicious bill, my friends. It's a great place to be. Mm. I know, I know, but I had to. Sorry, not sorry. I think it's about that time. I've ate so much, I, I feel like my hair is on fire right now. <sighs> Do you guys see the glaze over my eyes? I am so done, but so, <laughs> so happy. Let's talk about this hot pot. In terms of broth, knocked it out of the park. Not that many broth selections, but what they had, that was quality. Hey, yeah, uh, I'm sorry. I told you I'm full, Ed. <laughs> Anyway, love the broth, 4.5. Meat quality, I would have liked it if they sliced the meat just a bit thinner. Otherwise, everything was pretty fresh. 3.5, sauce bar. There was no sauce bar. But at this place, it's really quality over quantity. And the three dipping sauces they have here, I mean, you might have some trouble if you don't like spice, but for me, that dipping sauce was fantastic. Solid 4.5. Service, everybody here was so nice and accommodating. And I had to ask a lot of questions because it was my first time here. Give that a solid four. The only thing that's a bit lacking at this place is the selection of ingredients. But you get what you pay for, right? What they provide for $17.99, I feel like it's more than fair. I give that a 3.5. That's a total of 20 in an average of four, which I believe is the highest I've ever rated a New York Hot Pop Buffet. And guys, this is what I also love about doing this show because I love telling you guys these, these little hidden gems that I find. And this is definitely one of them. So I highly, highly recommend. If you want to try something new, come here and try this. You know, now that I had this, I really wish that while I was in Thailand, I had a Thai hot pot there because if it's this good here, I can't imagine how good this would have tasted back in Thailand. All right, guys, let's go to location number two. Location number two, and, and guys, I am really excited. I've been wanting to come here forever. Ever since I've been back in New York, I've been looking at what new hot pot places have been popping up. And all my friends have been coming to here. Hometown hot pot and barbecue. First impression, this place is clean. It's got a pretty interior. Not something I usually look for in all you can eat hot pot, but it's it's nice to have. And then, <laughs> look at this. I feel like a lot of hot pot places have been popping up as kind of like 99 favors and I cook, and I'm kind of sensing a theme. They all look really clean inside. The service is usually pretty good, and they all have these these massive menus. This actually kind of reminds me of like like a witch's spell book, but instead of like ice of newt, there's there's fatty beef inside. And I do love the fact that everything is crystal clear. You got the pictures and this is really perfect for people who have never had hot pot and I feel like this is one of the few places where the barbecue meat items look so much better than the hot pot barbecue items. For soup base they have eight. I have chosen Chinese herbal, spicy mala, and curry and they have a pot where you can actually separate it into three sections and that's always beautiful and of course I have to try both hot pot and barbecue. There's a few ingredients here I, I never had before so let's try those. First of all 
Hey, how are you? Can I get the stuffed tofu? What is this tofu stuffed with? Fish? Let's do it, yeah. Stuffed little, yeah, just give me all the stuffed. I want all my stuff stuffed. Okay, uh, let me get the beef. The lamb, beef tripe, fujo fish balls, tongue house, spinach, inoki, dry tofu skin, frozen tofu, spinach noodles, yo tao, chicken dumplings. Anything stuffed inside tofu, I'm game. I'm always game for that. Also, this is my first meal of the day, so hop off for breakfast. The soup base is here. Mala, that looks actually really spicy. And I love it when they have the chilies broken down and also the whole chilies. That makes it even more spicy. The curry and the herbal. The herbal doesn't look like it has that much ingredients in here. I see some scallions, some GGVs. Let me just try this. This is surprising. I smell absolutely nothing. It's slightly herbally, but a little bland. The spice broth. I see a ton of chilies, peppercorn. Let me just grab a little bit. Ooh. Oh, that's good. Mmm, that's excellent. Usually at Hapa places I've been to, the spicy broth is more just spicy, nothing else. This broth is really tasty. I mean, I can almost drink this as a soup. And curry, I've actually never had curry broth before. Mmm. Oh, that's nice too. Mm, I'm very coconut milky. I was kind of worried after tasting the Chinese herbal broth, but the other two are fantastic. Like really good. Here, we're just gonna we're just gonna move the, the herbal away from me and just yeah, just focus on these two. For meat, I just got lamb and beef. Just taking a look right now. The beef has good marbling on there, but like the last place, the, the cut is a bit thick. Out of my three sauces, curry won the race. First bite of food of the day. That just woke me up. Like I suspected, there is a good portion of fat on that beef, but it was a little tough. And that's just really due to it being cut a bit thick. Let's try the mala. Ah. Oh. Mm. I think that's the best spicy broth of all the hot pot places I've ever been to. It's really tasty. I'm really curious about their stuffed stuff. You know, that, that stuff. I'm gonna try it. This is the stuffed fried tofu. Put that in. The stuffed pepper. In goes that. Stuffed okra. I normally don't like okra, but yeah, why not? And while that's cooking, let's head to the sauce bar. This is a fairly complete sauce bar, and I love what they do here. Oh, this is really useful. So first one, I'm gonna make a traditional sauce. Sesame paste, garlic. Huh, hometown ultimate sauce. Interesting, gotta try this. And then chicken chili sauce. This looks like Thai chili. I am sad they don't have the chive sauce, but still, a lot of variety. Ah, our pepper and tofu looks done. So it's fish stuffed in here. It's just what it looks like. Fish paste stuffed in fried tofu. I'll tell you what, that works. Because the tofu itself doesn't really have that much flavor, but it does serve as a wonderful chewy vessel for that nice tender fish. Fish paste might seem kind of gross because, you know, it's just fish mashed into a paste, but I find it delightful. Oh, I really like that. That needs to be on hot pot menus everywhere. So this essentially is a fish paste jalapeno popper. Spicy on the outside, nice and tender on the inside. It needs a little dip. Let's take a swim in. This place got a bunch of hot pot mad geniuses working for them. And this is the okra. Oh, it's all falling apart already. Like I said, typically I don't love okra because I find it a little slimy. Let's try this inside the chicken chili. I'm thinking this is gonna be more like Thai chili. I don't know. First of all, that okra thing, that's actually really good. Never had okra on a hot pot before, but it needs to happen more often. Um, this chili thing, is, it wasn't what I expected. It's not really spicy. Ooh, extremely citrusy. You know what? I think this with more chili, this would be awesome. This tastes piece of lamb. This lamb is also cut kind of thick. And we're gonna try this in the ultimate hometown sauce. When you say something is ultimate, it's setting a pretty high bar. The sauce is almost like a sauté sauce. A little sweet, really peanutty. It's good. I just like my hot pot sauce with a little more kick. Just gonna turn up the heat on this chili here, because I really like it. It's very citrusy, just not spicy enough. Oh. I love it when two sauces, they just find each other, you know? It just tastes like hot oil full on made out with a lemon. I'm gonna put the veggies here because no one cares about veggies. This is on its own like a curry dish right now. And oh yeah, yeah, we got a frozen tofu in here as well. Whoa, this is really peculiar because I put this in a long, long time, but this is tofu skin, but it's still a little crispy, but I like it. A little al dente-ness. Hmm. That, wow. I have no idea why that thing is still a little crispy. And that's true, you get a nice little crunch. I think the fragrance of the oil comes out. That might be one of the best things I've ate in hot pots. I'm gonna have another one. Right, look at this, I've been boiling this for a while. Oh my goodness, this is like the greatest thing ever. Mmm. Mmm. Oh my goodness. 
go. Oh, this is a great start of my day. I wish somebody would invent an alarm clock where instead of a noise, it would just start feeding you hot pot. Okay, that was a lot of hot pot, but now I really feel like, I feel like I need some barbecue. Mussels. Before we cook these, we need to, yeah, we need to fix this up a little bit. Let's give these a little barbecue makeover. A little garlic, some oyster sauce. It's, is this a little ironic? A little citrusy chili sauce. Another one, let's do some hot oil. And the sky should really just be everywhere. So should garlic. Okay, that might be a little too much. Chili sauce. Okay, I really didn't know what I was doing, but let's see if it worked. Is this ready? I think it's ready. That's not ready. I think my mussels are done. This one I put a little chili sauce on, tons of garlic, some scallions. Looks good, smells good. Wow, this is good. Oh, you know what? I think the secret to a beautiful tasting mussel is just tons of garlic. I'm already stuck, but I could go for 20 more of those. A couple dessert items they had. One was this, I think this is this has taro and yam inside. Mmm. Coconut milk, not a big fan of taro. Love this stuff. This is pretty interesting, it's chilled. I don't know what this is. I see like little tapioca balls in here. It's honeydew. It tastes like extremely pureed honeydew with probably a little bit of water in here. A little tapioca balls, not bad for dessert. All right, let's talk about this place. Like I mentioned before, I'm starting to see a trend. More and more hot pot slash barbecue places are popping up all over the place. There's always the option of hot pot or barbecue or both. And I feel like they're emphasizing quality of ingredients. The interior is nicer. The menu is clearer. The service is better. And I think that's a great thing for hot pot because before all this, you typically go to a restaurant. The service is very iffy. The menu is just typically a printed sheet and you just check out your ingredients that you want. But unless you're really familiar with hot pot, it's gonna be kind of difficult. So I feel like these places, they really make it more welcoming for people who's never had hot pot before to just come here and just to experiment the wonderfulness of hot pot for themselves. So this restaurant in particular, in terms of sauce, there's a lot of variety. It's kind of missing some of the traditional stuff I like, but there's tons of options. So I give that a four. In terms of variety, I feel like on the barbecue side, there were more varieties of meat, but on the hot pot side, there were a lot of ingredients that I never tried before. So although I wish they had more different types of meats, I still give their selection a four. In terms of meat quality. The meat was cut a little thick. I feel like if they cut it a little thinner, it will be a lot better. So I'll give them a 3.5. Soup base. There were six soup bases. I tried three. One of them was just not doing it for me at all, the herbal one. But the other ones, the spicy was really good. I really liked the curry. I'll give them a 3.5. Finally, service. I feel like these, these newer hot pot places, they really do emphasize service, which is something Chinese restaurants don't typically do well in. I mean, there were some items I asked for that didn't show up, but overall, the service is pretty solid. I give that a 3.8. That's a total of 18 points point eight and an average of 3.76. All right, on to location number three. Location number three, I'm probably the last hot pot place I'll be filming for a while. I am here in Brooklyn because I forgot, I've been to Queens, I've been to Manhattan, there's gotta be some great all you can eat hot pot places in Brooklyn. So I looked around and found this. Lao Jie Hot Pot, or according to their name, Time Stamps Hot Pot. Lao Jie means old street. And you come here, I feel like I stepped back into my childhood, back in like the early 90s when I went to China because you see all the cassette tapes on the walls, you see some pictures of some of my old favorite music bands, probably the most interesting looking hot pot place I've been to so far. This is their menu. Um, it doesn't obviously have all the picture like like the last place, but it's very clear. Everything is English and Chinese. The soup bases, there's six, and they highly recommend the bone cylinder soup base and also the hot and spicy soup base. So we're gonna get both and let's just get started. Also looking at the table, this is cool. Well, I mean, this is looks like a brass mug and the vessel for the hot pot broth. This is really cool looking too. So here are the two broths. First glance, the spicy soup this is really spicy. Uh, a lot of whole chili pepper, sesame. Let's try this. Wow, really, really nummy. The heat level, it's okay. It's about a six or seven out of 10. In terms of flavor, you know, it's okay. It's not bad, not the most flavorful soup I ever tasted. Pork bone broth, look, wow. It's actually a whole bone in here. Yeah, we're gonna gnaw on that a little later. And this color of the broth kind of reminds me of a little lamb a little bit. Oh, that's good. That's good. I like that. It's not overly seasoned, which um, this will definitely get more seasoned as the broth boils all the ingredients. Nice porky flavor, extremely creamy. Maybe I'll just have some hot oil in this and make this a spicy one. The sauce bar is pretty cool. It looks like an old style uh, food stall. Let's see what they got here. Homemade special sauce, sesame paste. It looks like the usual suspects are here. Man. I really wish they had some chive sauce here. I think that is the hot oil. Let's try the house special sauce. They will make one of mine. 
All right, sauce is here, broth is here. Let's get some stuff to put into the broth. Let's get some uh, fatty beef, fatty lamb, tripe, beef tongue. Uh, da, da, da. Handmade fish paste, watercress, bay thai, pinoki mushrooms, gong zai mian. This place got presentation down. Look at this. All the veggies and little barrels. Probably the best presentation I've seen at a hot pot place. And they should, because they should be put on a pedestal. Oh, wow. This is in Chinese called bei ji bei, or arctic clams, a geo duck, a lot of names for this thing. All I know is, this is also called, it's freaking good. This is the fresh fish paste has a popsicle stick on it. Now here's why I'm impressed by this because most hot pot places you go to, besides the meat, they bring you almost everything else in just like a massive platter, wearing a basin thing because I guess the thought process is everything's going into the pot anyway, it doesn't really matter. But you know what? This looks really nice. And I like the fact that I can put ingredients separately into the broth. Because you know how it is, you wanna put in some spinach, but then you got the enoki mushrooms just clinging on for dear life. Okay, so now we know it looks good. Let's see how it tastes. Always gonna start with the meat. Really nice color, and look how thin this is. The last couple places I've been to, you can tell the difference, right guys? I feel like in most places, the meat quality might be pretty similar, but if you just cut it really thin, the meat is just gonna taste more tender. It's so pretty, I almost don't even wanna boil it. Well, almost. That turned out so pretty. Oh, I'm telling you, the way meat is cut makes such a big difference. The lamb too, everything is cut so nicely. You could almost see through this. Let's try the bone broth. Oh, mm. That's a great broth. Meat here is really fantastic. I love eating beef tongue because I, I talk for a living and this just helps me. Okay, that's not true. I just like it because it's good. I'm gonna try their house special sauce and see what this is all about. Hmm, it tastes a lot like pumpkin sauce. A little soy sauce, a little citrus. It's not bad. I might be biased though, I still like my own sauce a little better. And this is a treat. You can actually eat this raw, they clean this nicely. Just cook that for a little bit. Oh, it's very snappy, got a delightful clean flavor. Oh, that's really good. Let's just dig in. I told you guys I was a dumper. Because the meat is so thin, you can't really do that here. So I guess what I'm saying is that this hot pot, it's a bit habit changing. It's making me into a better man. Hmm. even like a bundle of that beef, I still taste so tender. Hardly needed to chew. They offered to make this more spicy. That looks like more of my style. Thank you so much. Let's take this new spicier broth for a test run. It's spicier and it's numbier. Now, this is really interesting. I've seen fish paste served at hot pot. Usually, um, what they do is they put it into a plastic bag and they squeeze it out like, like a noodle. I've never seen it being served like this. So, I guess you just take the popsicle stick and you just put it in here. Make like your own fish ball. Oh. Oh my God. It seems that the spicy side has invaded and there has been some integration. Typically, I don't want invasions of any kind in the world, but in this case, I really encourage it. And the fish balls, as soon as they rise to the surface, that's ready to go. More like a fish clump by this point. It tastes like a really tender fish ball. If you guys never had a fish ball before, I mean, it's just really mashed fish. It's supposed to be a little bouncy, very clean flavor, which this is. It's just that this is more tender than a, than a ball. You know, eating a nummy, spicy hot pot with like tons of tender beef, add a little bit of glass noodles, dipping it in your favorite dipping sauce. Just sitting here and eating it, listening to the music of my childhood, surrounded by cassette tapes and pictures of people I used to idolize when I was back in China. If it was thunderstormy outside, this would be the perfect day. Ah, come here, buddy. First time I laid eyes on you, I knew I wanted to gnaw on you. That's an example of something that's okay to say during a hot pot meal, but never okay to a random person in public. Oh, there's not a lot of meat out here. Some darn good tender. I've had a lot of food so far, and I'm feeling it. Now there's really only one thing I can do. Eat some noodles. This is what you should do towards the end of every single hot pot meal. Get some noodles and just let it soak up all that beautiful soup. That's how you make some of the best ramen. Because hot pot broth towards the end of the meal is amazing. Take some noodles, some spicy beef, some fish paste, a little bit of sauce. You know what else would be good here? Some of that beautiful broth. Oh, that is slap me in the face good. This seemingly looks really simple. Mm. This is the broth that boiled dozens of ingredients, from beef to lamb to fish to vegetables. If they were to package this ramen flavor, they run out of space on the bag. I mean, it just, everything is in here. This is the all, en oh my God. This is the all encompassing broth. And to have it be soaked up by all the noodles, hmm. 
And don't be afraid to slurp. You're not afraid to show the world you love your significant other, right? And don't be afraid to show these needles some love by slurping it loudly and proudly. All right, let's talk about this place. My impression of Old Street overall is this is a really solid hot pot place. To break it down, in terms of ingredient selection, it doesn't have as many as say 99 favors, but it has all the main ingredients. So I'm gonna give that a 3.5. In terms of sauce bar, again, all the vital stuff is there. Everything most people will need is readily available. I give that also a 3.5. Meat quality. Again, they don't have a lot of selections of meats here, but what they do have, I feel is better than any other hot pot place in New York City. And that just might be because they cut it really thin, but guys, it makes a huge difference. I give that a 4.5. For broth, the spicy one, it's really nummy. I don't feel like it's, it's that spicy. And to be honest, it's not quite as flavorful as I want it to be. But the pork bone broth, I'll drink that as a soup. So I give that a four. Service, as soon as I walked in, greeted me right away. Everybody was so nice. Service is a fantastic quality of this place. 4.5, that's a total of 20 and an average of four. After three videos and nine places, I think the New York City all you can eat hot pot tour at this point has come to a temporary end. But I promise you this, if there's another unique hot pot place like the Thai one that needs to be introduced to the world, I'll be there. Basically, if a new restaurant opens up that has the words all you can eat and hot pot, I'm gonna be there. And if it's good, I'm gonna tell you guys about it. But thank you all so much for watching the New York City hot pot series. I certainly enjoyed making them. And I promise a recipe for homemade hot pot will appear soon on my brand new cooking show for the love of food. The link for you guys is in my description box. Thank you again so, so much for watching. And until we eat again, I'll see you later.